Okay, today's video um, is all about, um, we're starting our third packet and we're going to really dive into linear relationships. And the goal of today is to be able to see um, how when we graph linear rela relationships that um, they're really going up in a proportional um, manner, um, that that rate of change is going to cause it to be a proportional relationship. And so we're going to practice graphing some uh, linear relationships and then really dive into their slope um, and the rate of change and kind of hopefully by the end of it you'll you'll be able to see that um, they're going up at the same rate um, which helps cause it to be proportional. Okay, let's start with our first example. Um, before we dive into too much of the meaning, um, what we are going to do is um, graph this. We are given the function y equals 3x. Um, we know our x values, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Um, so we're going to take this x value, plug it in, and try to find our y. And so when we have 3, it's going to be 3 times x. So when x is 0, it's going to be 3 times 0. 3 times 0 gives us 0. So we're left with the ordered pair 0, 0. Looking at the next one, um, when x is 1, um, we plug the 1 in um, for x, and we get 3 times 1, and we get 3. We plug 2 in for x, and we get 3 times 2, which would be 6. And then we're going to plug 3 in for x, and 3 times 3, which would give us 9. And these ordered pairs would be 2, 6, and 3, 9. And so we can graph those. 0, 0, over 1, up 3, over 2, up 6, over 3, up 9. So as you can see, that it is forming a straight line, which is good because it was supposed to form a linear relationship. And linear tells us that it's going to be a straight line. Okay, now when we dive into our slope, um, this delta sign right here means change, and so we're going to be looking at the changes of y over the changes of x's. Um, we have looked into it in our last unit, uh, the way we saw changes in y's over changes in x's was by using the slope formula. Uh, they're the same thing. We're asking, if you look at two y values, what's the change going to be there? And it doesn't matter what two you look at all of those are going to have the same change. If you notice, there's a pattern going here, and we're really just adding 3 each time. So our changes in y's, no matter what one you look at, is just really going to be 3. Um, now the changes in x's, again, it doesn't matter where you look. Um, it's either going to be 0 to 1, 1 to 2, or 2 to 3. Um, but no matter where you look, the changes are going to be plus 1. So if the changes in y's are 3 and the changes in x's are 1, then our slope is 3 over 1, which is 3. Uh, this is the same thing that we would have gotten if we would have used y2 minus y1. Um, let me pull some of these things out and I'll do it real quick. Um, if we call this y2 and this y1, and this x2, or excuse me, x1 and this x2, you're going to get 3 minus 0 over 1 minus 0, which would be 3 over 1, which again is 3. So slope essentially is just finding the changes in y's over your changes in x. Okay? The other method of slope is rise over run. If we just pick two points here, how many are we going up? 1, 2, so we're rising 3. And how many are we running? 1. So again, we find that the slope equals 3. Now, we've known how to do all of this, um, but the goal of today is to kind of be able to see that they're proportional. Um, in order for us to, to see that they're proportional, we have to kind of re reflect back on what proportions are. Uh, things that are proportionate um, are basically when two ratios equal each other. So, for example, one half um, is proportionate to four eighths. 
there's multiple ways to be able to check this, but the most common one is to go 2 times 4, which gives us 8. And then 8 times 1 gives us 8. And because 8 equals 8, we know that they're proportionate. What proportionate means is it's pretty much the same value, but it looks um, differently um, when it all boils down to it. Um, two things that would be proportionate would be like maybe a picture that's enlarged. So if we use these numbers, maybe you had a 1 by 2 picture that was enlarged to a 4 by 8. Um, it's still the same picture, it's just one's a little bit bigger than the other. Um, but one thing to note about proportion, proportionate things is they're all increased at the exact same rate. Um, and that's the key thing to lear learn about linears. Um, just like this picture was increased at the same rate, 1 was increased by multiplying 1 by 4, 2 by 4, um, to get the 8. They're increased at the same rate. Linear uh, relationships increase at the same rate as well. If you notice, we go up 3 over 1 to get to this next point. But if we go up another 3, and then over another 1, we get to the next point. Then up another 3, and then over another 1, it'll keep doing that up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1 for the entire duration of the line. Um, because it's going to keep increasing at the same rate. Another way to demonst demonstrate that these are increasing at the same rate would be, let's move this over to here, to look at some of our points. We have the points 2, 6, um, and let's just choose 3, 9. If we put 2, 6 as a 2 over 6 and then 3 over 9, uh, we are increasing again at the same rate. Excuse me, I've got these. We want to have our x1s, or our x's together. So if we had 2 over 3, and then our, y, oops, then our y's together, um, 6 to 9, that would demonstrate the same increase. Um, we're going the same proportion. It's times 3 to get the both. Um, so linear relationships are going to go up and over the exact same amount, um, no matter where you're at. The slope on, on a linear relationship, the slope on a line, will be the exact same no matter what. And so that's why you will often be able to just pick multiple points to be able to find the slope when using rise over run. It doesn't matter which ones you use for y1, y2 to be able to plug it in here because it's ultimately going to give you the same one. We might have to simplify it down, uh, but linear relationships are proportional. They go up at the exact same rate, um, which is kind of nice because as we start to get into word problems and stuff, we'll, we're going to find out that linear relationships are very predictable, um, and we can use that to kind of to, to forecast what might be coming in the future. So let's look at example number two and do this one real quickly. Um, this time, we have y equals one half x. So basically, we're going to take whatever x is and cut it in half. So if x is negative 2, we're going to cut that in half, and that would be negative 1. Half of 0 is still just 0. Half of 2 is 1. And so now, I, before I even find this last point, I should be able to predict it. Because I know it's a linear relationship, it's going to go up at the same rate. So to go from negative 1 to 0, I'm increasing by 1. To go from 0 to 1, again, I'm increasing by 1. And so I should be able to go, well, from 1 to this one would be an increase of 1, which would give me 2. Let's double check it just to make sure we're right. When we take 4 and plug it in for x, 1 half of 4 is definitely 2. So now we can graph this. Negative 2, negative 1. 0, 0. 2, 1. And 4, 2. graph these, indeed we do get a straight line. So now if we do our rise over run, you can see that we're going to go up 1, so we're going to rise 1, and then over 1, 2, run 2. Up 1, rise 2, or run 2, rise 1, run 2, and it will continue doing this for the duration of the line. If we look at our changes in y's, well, what's our change? Well, we're going to 
be going up, increasing by 1. And what's the changes in x's? It looks like we're increasing by 2 each time. Since we're increasing by 2, we're going to put a 2 there. And so both of these give us a slope of 1 half. Okay, I hope this kind of starts to paint the picture of how our linear relationships are proportional. Um, and we'll dive more into this in the future.